this project enabled us to do some very innovative work and I was really surprised having a science background for me to suddenly discover how much science and art had in common namely the awe and the wonder and the creativity aspects. There were three schools involved from Darlington and one of them was a special school, one of them was a secondary school and another one was a primary school. Quite a lot of the young people have stereotypical images of industry and this project enabled youngsters to perhaps get a more realistic view of what their local industry is about. I think one of the challenges was seeing people and children, teachers and children with very different learning styles yes. and different interests and abilities yeah. all coming together through inspiring themselves through their visits to Wilton site as well as back into the classroom. They actually had a short tour of the whole site. The reason they did that visit was to give them some ideas to base their projects on because they had no concept of what an industrial visit or site looked like and if that was going to be the basis for their project they needed the visit first. And I think what really worked with our group was because they were creating their own ideas and their own movements, it was it become theirs rather than me teaching them everything and them thinking I was teaching them a ballet dance. <laughs> and I think that's why it worked, yeah. <laughs> One of the teachers that was in on the session, I know that she kept commenting that she was thought it was a lovely way for them to learn the science. It's also gives them a little bit under more understanding of what the bodies can do, which I think was important for our pupils because I don't think they, you know, knew how much they could do and needed the confidence to do it. I like dancing. Lead. Silver. We learned how to do um, liquid dancing. Yeah, interesting. I learned a lot, like how to dance. The dance element, in particular, used for the inspiration processes of the plant which they explored on the visit. The um, visual artists looked at the materials and all the different colours and textures and things that come from that plant. And uh, together they made dance and movement which explored scientific ideas and concepts for children to learn and expressing it in that way, but also the screens became another way of understanding that and also a backdrop for the dancing incorporated into that movement. They were challenged by the materials, they were challenged by the freedom, they were challenged by the idea that they had to decide where the project was going, that I was feeding off them and feeding back to them. After the first day, I basically gave them all the materials for the rest of the week. And I said, this is the amount of materials you have. Working on the idea that I knew previously before, the Earth has a finite resource of stuff linked with the, the idea from the oil. This finite resource of this stuff. Um, I started off um, with what they would want. I, I suggested to them that um, it would be interesting to find out about what they wanted being on the horizon. So if you had an, an horizon in your life, whatever. What's on the horizon? Bring it closer. Then we worked with what do you need? I encourage them to be imaginative. These can be anything. These can be like, you know, you conjure up what it is that you want it to be, you know. What can't you do without? You choose the thing that you can't do without and then you take it with you to somewhere else. So I took them to different places. The, the, the final thing from that was 
um, that I set them on. A, I, I just said, right, you're going on. A, you're going off now. You're going on a journey. You know, take this final thing with you. So they were left basically with creating a form of transport to take them with this with this thing, which they then went back and brought all their things that they just had in the previous week and placed them in their area of discovery. But if it's like slightly up, then like flat. Yeah. Yeah, but it's. The process of the oil through to the materials which they'd used in the workshops. I extended that line and took the oil back further and I extended the materials they worked with in the workshops and brought that further into the future. So it went back down to where does oil come from? The understood idea is that it comes from plankton. And at the other end of the scale, I've taken the materials full stretch to the point where the materials have become useless, discarded, and then recycled and brought back as a useful material, hence the recycled plastic. This is the life cycle of plastic. Plastic starts off as plankton, which are mini microbes in the sea. When billions of plankton die, they mix with weeds and grasses under the sea and eventually turn into oil. Once they turn into oil, the oil goes under the ground and people dig it up out of the ground. It then goes to chemical factories where it's burnt and once it gets to a really high temperature they cool it to make lots of different gases and liquids which they mix together to make different plastics. This is one type of plastic, it is then turned into chips, placed in a tray, heated up, compressed and turned into this plastic. And that was the life cycle of plastic. <laughs> As part of the project we thought it would be best to take the children into the Wilton site so they could actually get a, a real chance to see what goes on there. They managed to get a really good basic explanation of what's actually going on in each of those buildings or what the big towers are for or what all the pipes are for. Um, so I think the visit was really key to the animation working. If we'd have gone into the school and, and produced this animation without the visit, um, the only shape they probably would recognise would be a cooling tower, something they can see from outside. So it was great getting in there and, and getting all these visual cues. So they actually got real hands-on production of animation. Rather than me standing there pressing the button and telling them what to do, you were able to almost step back. You just keep an eye that everything's not being knocked, but you can step back and watch three nine-year-old children creating animation there in their own classroom. We assigned a line of the poem to each student so they could learn their own line and we literally sat in a nice quiet room with a microphone and the children read their line one at a time and we've then got a perfect narration track where every child features their voice on the animation as well as having hand, hands-on experience of creating the visuals as well. Due to the war, ICI Billingham had to grow. They looked around the area for somewhere new to go. Down the road at Wilton was perfectly thought. Pipes and tunnels, structures and lights working every hour. The Wilton site has changed the lives of almost everyone. Let's hope they keep on making things for many years to come.